Hey, I'm Kate, and this video is going to cover the very basics of eyeliner. So my makeup is finished other than my eyeliner and mascara, which clearly makes a big difference. And what's on my eyelids is Benefit's Creaseless Cream Eyeshadow in No Pressure. I really love this bronzy shade. It's You can do a lot with it. You can build it up and go for a darker, smokier eye. It's not going to be really super dark because it's a little bit metallic, so it's going to reflect light really nicely. Or you can wear just a light amount of it and go for kind of a daily everyday eye look. What I did today is put it all over my lid and then put a little bit of a darker brown eyeshadow in the powder form in the outer corners and then that is all. So that's what I'm starting with. You'll see a big difference in how well your eyeliner both goes on and lasts during the day if you use some kind of primer on your eyelid. So for me today, these, this creaseless cream eyeshadow is sort of my primer. It acts really well as one and also has color. But if you want to use just a regular eyeshadow primer, I recommend either Max Paint Pot and Painterly. Um, it's a good neutral shade, and it actually doesn't have to be painterly. But if you're about my skin tone, this is a great neutral shade eyeshadow primer. Or if you want something without any color whatsoever, I also really like Tarte's Clean Slate 360 Creaseless 12 Hour Smoothing Eye Primer. So this, like I said, won't give you any color. And a couple of you mentioned that when you try and do like a little bit of a cat eye, or if you wanna to come to the edge of your eyelid, it smears and kind of runs down. Make sure you're putting eyeshadow primer, especially a clear one. This might be easier to work with if you have that issue. All the way down around your the bottom of your lid. Because it's clear, no one will see it, but it'll act really well as sort of that double-sided tape to hold the liner in place. So once your lids are prepped, you can decide what kind of eyeliner look you're going for. Today I'll be using a Kohl pencil liner um, and just doing a basic line. We're not doing a cat eye or anything fancy. And I'll show you how to fill in the gap that may happen between your liner and lashes with a couple different tools. Um, and also kind of give you some other recommendations if you don't want to use a Kohl liner. The reason why I'm using a Kohl liner is they tend to be the softest. They give you the most impact and sort of a bold line without feeling like you're dragging a pencil across your eyelid. You won't have any issue with a Kohl liner. Because they're so soft, if you don't have them really sharp, they can leave a lot thicker of a line than you may be going for. So make sure to have a pencil sharpener ready to really sharpen almost, every, I sharpen mine almost every day. And it's just one little twist, so it's not like I'm running out of eyeliner really quickly. It actually lasts quite long. I'm surprised at how long I can get on an eyeliner. So that's why I'm using coal. There's the main three differences are liquid, coal, and pencil, and I actually did a um, blog post about this, so I'll include a link to it um, in the text below this. But coal is by far my favorite. If you're new to liner, get coal. Just don't even bother with a pencil because it'll be frustrating. Another difference that you may find between liners is ones that come in a pencil form that you need to sharpen, or ones that come in a tube that you just twist up. And it's really just a preference thing. I find that the pencil ones that you use a pencil sharpener for are easier to get a point on. And a lot of the ones that just twist up, it's really hard to get a point on that. And unless you really focus on using it uh, vertically to kind of keep the tip really sharp, it's hard to. So I like using these twist up pencils for my lower lash line because I never need a super precise line. I kind of like that it's rounded, but for my uh, top lash line, I always go for a pencil so I can have a really sharp point to start with. So Max Black Eyeliner has been a longtime favorite of mine. I don't currently have it. I'm working through Cynthia Raleigh's eyeliner that came in a uh, Birchbox limited edition box, and they also sell it on the website. I love this eyeliner. And I also have a Noir, I think I was corrected on how to say that, um, Forever Noir Eyeliner, which is also from Birchbox, I believe. Um, I will correct that in the text below if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly certain this came in a Birchbox as well. Um, so both of these are long wear. They are not waterproof. Um, they're just long wear. So if you have issues with the eyeliner kind of fading, yeah, I want to make sure I was saying that right. They are not waterproof. If you have issues with your eyeliner running or smudging, get a waterproof formula. Even if it, you don't think it's water related, it's just going to stick a little bit better. So long wear is going to be great. If you have major issues with your eyelids getting oily, go ahead and get a waterproof eyeliner. So depending on your eye shape, you can determine what kind of line you want. You can't go wrong with a thin line just mirroring your natural eyelid. That just 
that'll never be wrong. I always add a little bit of a thicker line to the outer part of my lids because they tend, they naturally droop down a little bit. So that thicker line adds a little bit more impact and helps sort of balance the shape out. And I don't like going in too close here because I find that that can make my eyelids in general look really heavy. So since I'm gonna go a little bit thicker out here, I like to start out here and that'll kind of determine the thickness. And then I can really lightly just pull the liner in and finish sort of where my lashes stop right about here on my The last tip I'll give you before I start is to use your cheek as a resting point for your hand. That way you're not just trying to get it straight by letting it float out in the middle of nowhere. But if you rest either your elbow on a surface or your fingers on your cheek, that'll give you a good base to sort of rest on. You may have noticed I did these little short strokes. Instead of committing to one bold line and sort of starting at the front, pressing down and dragging all the way to the end, I like doing the short strokes. You can go in and fill in afterwards, but it allows you to sort of pick how thick your line is getting without just dragging and hoping you're not pulling your lid at all. So the first thing you want to check is to make sure you went all the way to the edge of your eyelid. And an easy way to do that is to lightly pull your skin back a little bit and fill in that last little gap with the liner. That way you won't put any on the bottom lid. But the worst thing you can do is end your eyeliner too soon. So you're always better to go right up to the edge of that top lid. So at this point, if I was doing my makeup without filming a tutorial, I would curl my lashes and put on the first coat of mascara. And oftentimes that causes a little gap to show up. Just be just because the eyelash curler will press right against it and kind of push some of the liner away. So my two go-to tools, two go-to tools for taking care of that um, issue after I'm totally done with my mascara is either the Too Faced, oh my gosh, I've had this for so long, all of the writing has um, rubbed right off. Shoot, I should have looked up the name. I'll put it below this video. Anyway, it's their three-pronged, you might be able to see if the camera will focus, it's almost like a felt tip pen and it's got these three little dots and you can use it as liquid liner and just drag it on an angle across the top of your lid or use it the way I'm about to show you. And what I like to do, again, this is after my mascara is finished and I'll show you a completed look at the end of this video, is just press it from the bottom going up into any of the gaps I see. And that way you're, you don't have to worry about the liner being like liquidy or heavy because it's just in a felt tip and it'll darken and blacken any of those gaps that showed up without adding any extra sort of weight and heaviness to your lid. Another option would be to take a traditional liquid liner, um, and this one's also kind of in a felt tip, but it's a little pointier. And this one is from Sephora. I like, I'm not picky about liquid liner. Um, this one I really like. So it's from Sephora, and it's just got this long, nice pointy brush here. And if you have a pretty noticeable gap, or you're just unable to get your liner as close to your lashes as you want, either before or after you start mascara, rest this and just press this right on top of your lashes. Make the goal to be to touch your lashes because the liner is not gonna make a big difference if you're wearing mascara anyway. And that way you can fill in that gap without pressing too high up into the liner that you just applied. So either one of these techniques is gonna make your line look more bold because both of these are inkier, darker, and probably gonna be a little bit shinier than just a regular coal liner. So keep that in mind. If you're worried about your line being too dark or too bold, maybe don't do it as thick if you know you're gonna go in afterwards and just run that liquid or use a felt tip and fill in any gaps and make it a little bit blacker right by the lash line. Neither of these are good for using on your waterline, which is the area between, gosh, like when you close your eyes, it's the area that comes together. Any eye doctors out there are going to discourage this, and I don't blame them. My eye doctor when I was younger told me to stop putting makeup in my eyeball. Um, so just know that this isn't highly recommended, but 
a makeup look you'll often find is a dark waterline. And I would go back to your coal liner, preferably a waterproof one or just a long wear. And if you fill in that top waterline, you're gonna get this nice thick black line on top of your lid. What is gonna happen during the day is it'll work its way onto your lower waterline. So you can either sort of be aware of that and kind of rub it off occasionally if you just want it on the top, or you can put maybe a lighter shade, maybe like a bronzy brown on the bottom, and that way you have something there so it doesn't look like it's a mistake, but it's not quite as heavy as a black. And as far as lower eyeliner goes, I almost always use just a bronzy brown shade or even a gray. I hate the look of black liner on my lower lash line. It's way too heavy. It ends up dragging my eyes down. So my, my go-tos are Stila's Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner in either Metallic Umber, which is a darker bronzy shade, actually pretty darn close to the Benefit Creaseless Cream Eyeshadow and No Pressure. These two go perfectly together. One that's a little bit lighter that almost just creates a shadow under my lash line without looking like, oh, she has eyeliner under there, is the sepia color, which I picked up. This is new to them, I think, in the last couple months, but this is really nice as well. I'd say I've used this more in the summer, and now that my eyeshadows are tending to get a little bit darker as we're getting into the cooler months, um, I'm going back for the Metallic Umber as well. But they have... I hope that's not umber. It probably is. Forgive me. Anyway, they have about a thousand shades. So these are perfect for upper lash line as well, but I really love them for lower lash line. My absolute do not break rule is to never wear eyeliner only on your lower lash line without putting anything on top. Occasionally I will see this and I think, girl, you've got to balance it out. So if you like wearing eyeliner on your lower lash line, black, brown, gray, blue, whatever. You've got to put something on your top lash line to balance it out. It doesn't have to be heavy, it doesn't have to be bold or anything, but it'll make your eyes look more even and rounded instead of like they're being pulled down by too much depth underneath. So that is my one tip that I would highly recommend if you're new to liner or you're not sure sort of what the rules are with that. I think you can totally get away with just wearing top liner and going with absolutely nothing, like no mascara or anything or just a light liner on the bottom, but you can't do the opposite. If you're gonna put something on the bottom, you have to put something on the top. When it comes to lining your lower lash line, make sure you don't go too far into the center, unless you're doing a really bold, smoky eye, which you'd wanna just line the entire eye. I like to end about where your eyelashes end. It just looks a little bit more natural, and that way if you're going to wear black mascara and use a light shade like I'm using, it'll just look like there's this shadow and definition underneath there without this really strong, bold line. If you are gonna use a black liner on your lower lash line, I highly recommend either using an angled brush or a smudge tool, which often comes on the back of a lot of drugstore eyeliners, to soften the line so it doesn't look like you just drug the eyeliner across the back. So I like to start on the outside and work my way in. So you can see that added definition without too much boldness. And once I get mascara on there, it'll almost look like there's nothing under there unless the sun hits it right. So on top of offering the tips in this video, I went ahead and answered some questions that were posted on the blog's Facebook fan page. So if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to click over to my website to um, see my answers to some of the most frequently asked questions when it comes to eyeliner. 